YouTube. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for the support. It's less than 10 business days. We got close to 220 subscribers and multiple likes. I really appreciate it. It means a, a, a world to us. We got several questions related to one topic, which I think is extremely important. What can I do if I think my child, my family member, my significant other, my friend, hanging out in a bad company, which may be exposed to illicit substances, talks about it, or I think he may be involved, or she, him or herself. What can be done? Before, it's a great question. Before I try to answer it, I want to show you how you can ask questions. We actually had a discussion and decided not to encourage direct questions online or comments because people many times put their own real names or names of their significant others and that exposes them to uh, exposing some sensitive information that we would rather avoid. However, you can email to us using MD, medical doctor, MD at painhelpwithp.us, MD at painhelp.us or email pinfox2 at yahoo.com. We'll try to put it in the description. And you can fax to us using our fax, 614-453-8222. 614-453-8222. Now, getting back to the question, what can be done? First, uh, the, the key thing when you want to help somebody else is building a rapport, is being, be, uh, developing good relationship, developing trust. If you don't have that with a person, your chances of helping that person is pretty low. Many times the person may be hanging in a, in a company because he or she is not comfortable talking to other people, maybe to family members. So building rapport is critical. Now, after you do that or improve on that or get another person involved, maybe professional, maybe somebody else who can basically build this rapport, need to understand what you deal with. There are roughly two stages, uh, maybe even three, but I'll, I like to simplify things, so I would divide it into two stages. First, when we deal with contact with drug culture, when a person is involved in a company or hanging around what we call bad guys, guys who use stuff, but there is no signs that he may be using or there is no signs of damage or you don't know, in the second uh, uh, stage, when there is real addiction, when you see impaired function, when you see use despite harm, and I want to refer to previous two videos that we explain the differences, and the approach is completely different. You need to know the difference. So what can you do if you're in the first stage? You see somebody in a bad company, you hear, you see the messages, they mention something, occasionally person implies that someone offered to buy or use something, what can you do? The knee-jerk reaction is always, let me talk to the guy, let me explain the dangers, let me show the statistics, let me preach to the person. Usually it does not work, primarily in the later stages. Occasionally it does, it actually depends on how much trust you have. You need to build on the trust and the rapport and do it in a gentle way, reprimand gently. If you're lucky, it can work out. Many times it doesn't work. What can you do? In my opinion, you can use this movie called Requiem for a Dream. It's actually found on YouTube. Uh, I'm sure you can find it on other sources. It was made, uh, made around year 2000 and it shows the, the characters, real people, who actually uh, developed addiction. And it talks about how it destroyed their dreams. And I think it's extremely important because every normal person has a dream and wants to fulfill its dream. And if you show what really happens to them, picture a thousand words. In my humble opinion, even if you have teens or that, and all teens at some point actually in this environment are at some risk, you would rather show them this video. The video is long. You can actually show them parts. And I think YouTube has parts of the videos um, that would be very efficacious. In my opinion, it would be better to show this video and discuss it directly for a dream than just lecture or preach. That's step number one. Now, what happens if you get somebody at, at stage two when there is use or abuse and, uh, you know, uh, use this part harm? Usually this is not enough. It could be, but usually it's not enough. Something is going on. 
And that situation, you need to understand that you're dealing with medical condition, you're dealing with medical disorder. So it actually, DSM-5, as we describe, it's a medical condition. And at that point, I, would, I want to refer to the thumbnail of this video, which is taken from Star Wars. You have the captain who is half human, half not, half rational, half uh, emotional. And uh, you need to be like that. You need to be rational and emotional. And there is somebody standing by him. There is a, an assistant. An assistant has to be a good healthcare pro provider. Well, he has experience and I'm going to touch on that who understands and, and uh, who can help. There is a saying that prisoner cannot relieve himself from or herself from prison. It means, yeah, it happens occasionally they make movie about escapes, but most of the time in the usual situation, if somebody is, you know, God forbid in prison, you need, um, you need somebody else to take him out. You need a professional to take him out of there. So in a sense, it's a chemical prison. In a sense, the person is in prison in his own brain. Uh, and uh, there are two components. There is a chemical dependence. The person craves this substance, um, like people crave food or, um, or drinks or water. And uh, there is a psychological component. So first I would recommend to take care of the chemical component of addiction. How you can do it, uh, it's not that difficult. You need to find a good healthcare provider, a good program. It could be inpatient program for severe cases. It could be office-based treatments with buprenorphine, uh, which is commonly known under the trade name of Suboxone, but it's not the only formulation. But this substance basically puts you on a level ground. It can take care of the chemical addiction, uh, take, uh, saturate the receptors, and then make it possible for the person to take care of the psychological component, which is not less important. But I like to take care of that first, so the person feel has enough uh, chance to deal with the psychological component. How you deal with psychological component? Usually you need a professional. It could be a counselor, it could be a psychologist, it could be a psychiatrist, it could be a 12-step program. Actually, in our area, in, uh, in our state, there is a program called uh, Narcotic Anonymous. It could be even a national level. Uh, it generally works well. It's a 12-step program. A reservation in some places is that these people can be targeted. And I heard stories about people who went for 12 steps and were targeted on the way out, on the way in with individuals who actually tried to sell them stuff, solicit stuff. And that makes them that, that makes it dangerous. Um, actually, if, if, if the person has... Um, substance abuse program and he goes to AA Alcoholic Anonymous which is a well-structured program which is also 12 steps in my humble opinion it can work as well as and there is much less danger um, what else can you do as a family member well you need to coordinate this here how you can do that I would recommend you this book called Beyond Addiction Guide for Families Beyond Addiction it's called How Science and Kindness Help People Change. Um, I, I can show you this book. Um, you can actually get it on Amazon. You can get it in the library. Uh, um, I really like this book. I have no commercial interest. Um, it's actually well written. It, uh, it talks in you know, lay terms about um, what is addiction? Why, why do people change? How people change? where you start, damage control, what are your goals, treatment options, suggesting treatments, what you do during treatments, and uh, when, is, when it's an emergency. And it can be an emergency, you need to be prepared. It can be an emergency, and sometimes you need to act fast. So in summary, it's a good question what you can do if your family member or loved one is exposed to the risk of addiction, is in contact with drug culture, you think, is actually abusing or misusing substances or alcohol. So you need to build a rapport. You need to assess what stage is it. Is it just the contact with street culture? There's a full-blown addiction with use despite damage, with impaired function, marks of use, and so on. Understand it's a disease. Don't be negative. It's a disorder. It's a medical problem. You need to understand the chemical component, the psychological component, take care of the chemical component, put person on the level ground to take care of psychological component, 
use their, those resources, use this movie Requiem for a Dream in initial stage, use this book Beyond Addiction, how science and kindness help people change, use your local resources, um, use Suboxone programs, use um, counselors, psychologists, psychiatrists, you definitely need professional help, and you need to remain calm, optimistic, and supportive. And in many, many cases, I've seen it many times, people who do follow those simple um, um, principles and are motivated and help others to change actually achieve very good results. It is reversible uh, with good care, which is available most of the time. You can help your loved one to, um, uh, to get back to function, to overcome his and her addiction. And again, many thanks again for this great question. Uh, please send us more questions. And um, again, if you like this video, please subscribe. Please uh, press like and we'll follow up with uh, additional videos. I'd like to thank CPMI team for making this project available. Uh, thank you so much and have a good day. Hi there, this is Casey Reed, patient of Dr. Mulligan. I just want to thank him and his staff for the quick response and the procedures that they caught may save my life. Thank you very much.